ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اخوه الاسلام يا عباد الله uh, first and foremost our brother Abu Ukasha will, will not be able to join us today as i found out earlier that the brother had a responsibility his mother uh, is in the hospital needed to be taken to the hospital so he took his mother to the hospital and he planned on staying with her at the hospital until she was released so as a result of that our brother will not be joining us uh, today in this particular lecture series but inshallah uh, we'll hope to see him uh, again in further in future uh, lecture series inshallah as for Abu Mujahid he still planned to be here unfortunately he may be coming closer to 7 o'clock I tried to call him and wasn't able to contact him to inform him that Abu Akasha couldn't participate with the hopes of him uh, coming earlier in order to speak uh, I left two messages on his answer machine uh, the fact that he hasn't got back at me is an indication that he hasn't checked those messages so uh, hopefully uh, he checked the message and maybe he'll come early inshallah earlier we like to begin this particular admonition because this is what it is it's, an, it's a mo'idha and not necessarily a speech with the hadith of Anas ibn Malik which is collected by Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih and likewise by Imam Muslim in his Sahih in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said أُرِضَتْ عَلَيَّ الْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ وَلَمْ أَرَى كَالْيَوْمْ فِي الْخَيْرِ وَالشَّارِ وَلَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ لَضَحِقْتُمْ قَلِيلًا وَلَبَقَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا To the end of the hadith The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that the paradise and the hellfire were presented to me and I have not seen the like of this day from good and evil good that is found in the paradise and evil that is found in the fire and if you all knew or had knowledge of that which I knew or have knowledge of then you would laugh less and you would cry more 
you would laugh less and you would cry more. Al-Hafidh ibn Hajr al-Asqalani he comments on this particular narration. He states, وَالْمُرَادْ بِالْعِلْمْ هُنَا مَا يَتَعَلَّقُ بِعَظَمَةِ اللَّهِ وَانْتِقَامِهِ مِمَّنْ يَعْصِيهِ وَالْأَحْوَالِ أَلَّتِي تَقْعُوا عِنْدَ النَّزْعَةِ والموت وفي القبر ويوم القيامة ومناسبة كثرة البقاء وقلة الضحك في هذا المقام واضحة والمراد به التخويف He states that what is intended by knowledge here is that which is connected to Allah's grand, grandeur to Allah's exaltation, His excellence, and Him taking revenge on those that are disobedient to Him, that fall into sinfulness, and fall into statements and actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, hates and is displeased with. And what is intended by knowledge here is the terror, the horror from those that are disobedient that which will occur from those that are disobedient or upon those that are disobedient from them being extracted from their bodies, their souls being extracted from their bodies and death and the horrors of the grave and the trials of Yom Qiyama or the day of resurrection thus crying abundantly and laughing less are clearly related to these situations crying or laughing less and crying more are clearly connected to these particular situations due to, due to the tremendousness of that day thus it is, a, it is incumbent upon the believer to reflect off these things because the intent of the, of the statement of the Prophet ﷺ is to instill a type of fear for that which will occur to those that are disobedient to Allah on that day. That the people will be faced with difficulties and trials that which they will not be able to tolerate nor will they be able to bear. As the Prophet ﷺ, he stated in the Hadith of Abi Huraira, which is collected by Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih. He said, Utiya Rasulullah bi lahmin فَرُفِعَ إِلَيْهِ ذِرَاعَ تُعْجِبُهُ فَالنَّحْسَ مِنْهَا نَحْسَةً وَمِنْهُ نَحْسَةً The Prophet or Abu Hurairah, he stated that some meat was brought to the Prophet ﷺ and the forearm, of, 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 a forearm was given to him and he, it, 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 it amazed him, or he was pleased by it. And he started to eat from it. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he stated, أَنَا سَيِّدُ النَّاسِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ هَلْ تَدْرُونَ مِمَّا ذَلِكَ He said, I will be the chief of humanity on Yom al -Qiyama. And do you all know how that will be? Are you all aware of how that will be? And then he stated, يُجْمَعُ النَّاسِ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخَرِينَ فِي سَعِيدٍ وَاهِدٍ يُسْمِعُهُمُ الدَّاعِي وَيَنْفُضُهُمُ الْبَصَرِ وَتَدْنُوا الشَّمْسِ فَيَبْلُغُ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْغَمِّ وَالْقَرَبِ مَا لَا يُطِيقُونَ وَلَا يَحْتَمِلُونَ The Prophet ﷺ, he stated that the mankind, humanity from the earliest generations to the latter generations will be gathered on one plane from the beginning of man to the end of time all of these individuals will be gathered on one plane 
and the announcer's voice will be heard. They will be made to hear it. And the watcher will, will, will see them. And the sun will be brought close. And the people will suffer from trials and distress. That which, they, they, that which in which they will not have the ability to bear or tolerate. That which they will have, oh, they will not have the ability to bear or tolerate. To the end of this very long hadith. But this particular narration shows us, or this portion of the, of the hadith shows us, that this day will not be easy for anyone. That it will be a tremendous day. It will be a tremendous day filled with distress, filled with hardship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he informs us in his noble book concerning some of the trials that the people will face. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Yawma yatadhakkarul insanu ma sa'a wa burrizatil jahimu liman yarah The day where man will remember that which he used to do, that which he put forth, his efforts. And the fire will be made apparent or manifest to those that can see. The fire will be made apparent and manifest to those that can see. Those that are destined to enter it and those that are destined to be saved from it, everyone will see it. And this is something that will not be easy upon the people. As the Prophet ﷺ, he stated concerning the tremendousness of the fire in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, which is collected by Imam Muslim in his Sahih, يُعْتَى Jahannam لَهَا سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ زِمَامٍ وَمَعَا كُلِّ زِمَامٍ سَبْعُونَ أَلْف مَلَكٍ يَجُرُّونَهَا that the, that the fire will be bought will be brought close and it will have 70,000 ropes and upon each rope will be 70,000 angels pulling it pulling it for everyone to see everyone will be made to see the fire on that day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise he says, Yawma yakhrujuna min al ajdaathi sira'an ka'annahum nusubun yufidun. The day in which they will exit their graves, yani swiftly, as if they are racing to some goal. Khashi'atan abusaruhum, tarahakuhum villa. Their their sight will be humbled and lowliness will, will overtake them lowliness or state of humiliation will overtake them and that is the day in which you all have been promised that is the day in which you all have been promised the Prophet ﷺ, he stated in the hadith of Aisha, which gives us further clarity concerning the statement of Allah here. He says, يُحْشَرُ النَّاسِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ هُفَاتًا عُرَاتًا غُرْلًا That the people will be raised up and gathered on the day of resurrection, barefoot, naked, and uncircumcised. Aisha, she said to the Prophet, and Nisa wa Rijal Jamian Yanduru Ba'dahumila Ba'd that men and women, all of them yani looking at each uh, will be looking at each other. They'll be nude, nude or naked, they'll be staring and gazing at each other. 
The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Al Amr, ya Aisha, Al Amr, ashadu min an yandru baadhum ila baad." That the affair on this day will be too severe for them to be looking at each other. Now we know that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he stayed in the Hadith of Usama. مَا تَرَكْتُمْ بَعْدِي فِتْنَةٌ أَدَرٌ عَلَى الرِّجَالِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ I have not left a fitna more harmful upon the men than the women. The beauty of, a, of the woman is a fitna for men. Thus we're commanded to lower our gaze and, pro, and prohibited from being secluded alone with them and prohibited from mixing with them unnecessarily. But on this particular day, the Prophet wasallam stated that humanity will be raised up, barefoot, naked and uncircumcised. And that the condition of the people on that day will be so severe, that a man won't, be, won't look to gaze at a woman even though she may be standing right next to him without any clothes on. The people will be in a state of frenzy from the tremendousness of that day and the trials that, will, that the people will, be, will undertake on that day. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He informs us of this day, يَوْمَ تَكُونُ السَّمَاءُ كَالْمُهِلْ وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُ كَالْإِحِنْ وَلَا يَسْأَلُوا حَمِيمٌ حَمِيمًا يُبَصَّرُونَهُمْ يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِي يَوْمَ إِذَنْ بِبَنِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَأَخِيهِ وَفَصِيلَتِهِ الَّتِي تُؤْوِي وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the, uh, uh, the day in which the sky will, will boil. And we know that the sky is intangible. It's intangible. It's something that we float right through. But on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that uh, that day it will be as if the sky is boiling. And the mountains are like wool. And no friend, no companion, will ask about the other, even though he will see his friends and their condition. And the criminal on that day would want to ransom himself from the punishment, even if he was ransoming himself with his own children, or his wife or brother, or his kinfolk that sheltered him, or if he was capable of ransoming all of mankind, then he would do so on that day in order for him to be saved. In order for him to be saved. These are some of the statements of Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, informing us of this particular day the trials that will occur therein and the condition of the people as a result of these trials. That on that day, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Every individual on that day will have enough for him to only be concerned about himself. He will only care about himself. And in the narration of Abu Huraira that we opened up with, or that we stated previously, when the people go to the prophets, various prophets and messengers, they will be concerned with themselves. Nafsi, nafsi, nafsi. Idhabu ila ghayri. Myself, myself, myself. Go to someone else. And then each prophet naming another prophet to go to. This is showing us the reality of that day. 
and the severity of that day. Yom al Qiyamah, the day in which all of us will be resurrected and have to stand in front of Allah for that which we put forth in this life of statements and actions. Belief, statements and actions. In light of that, and in looking at that, <clears throat> then us, yani going through this month of Ramadan, then we have a, we have a good opportunity We have a, a, a blessed opportunity We have a good opportunity in this month of Ramadan The month in which The Prophet ﷺ he stated إِذَا جَاءَ Ramadan فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ وَصُفِّدَتْ الشَّيَاطِينِ the Prophet ﷺ, he stated, when the month of Ramadan comes, When the month of Ramadan comes, When the month of Ramadan comes, <clears throat> the doors to the paradise are opened and the doors to the fire are closed and the devils are shackled or chained. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned Futihat Abu Samah that the doors of the heavens are opened. In another narration, he mentioned Futihat Abu Rahma that the doors of mercy are open. <clears throat> we understand the tremendousness of this particular statement in another narration of the Prophet ﷺ, which is likewise narrated by Abu Huraira, in which the Prophet ﷺ, he states 
من صام رمضان إيمان واحتساب غفر الله ما تقدم من ذنبه ومن قام ليلة القدر إيمان واحتساب غفر الله ما تقدم من ذنبه that whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with iman and expecting a reward from Allah then he is forgiven for his sins and whoever stands yani Laylatul Qadr stands in the salah tarawih during the night yani performs Laylatul Qadr uh, 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 performs tarawih during the night of Laylatul Qadr having iman and expecting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will be forgiven for his sins that he will be forgiven of his sins Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen he states in his book Majalis Shahri Ramadan min fadail al-sawm fi Ramadan annahu sababun li maghfirat al-dhunub wa takfir al-sayyi'ah from the virtues of the month of Ramadan or, the, or fasting the month of Ramadan is that it is a means for the forgiving of one's sins and the expiating of, uh, of one's sins it is a means for the individual to be forgiven and for his sins to be expiated for his sins to be expiated or done away with, wiped away. This particular, these two particular narrations in this point is very important for one that hopes in Allah in the last day and reflects off the condition of humanity on Yom Qiyamah. As there is no one from amongst men except that he is a sinner regardless of how pious he may be how upright he may be how righteous he may be know that he has some skeleton in the closet that he doesn't want others to know of he has some error with him some mistake with him some sin that he commits Thus there is no one on the face of the earth that stands free or without need of the rewards that are contained in the month of Ramadan. As the Prophet ﷺ, he pointed out in the hadith of Abi Dhar, <clears throat> in which, which is collected by Imam Muslim in this hadith Qudsi, in which the Prophet ﷺ narrates from Allah and it's a long hadith but the shahid or the point of reference is when he quotes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says Ya ibadi innakum tukhti'una bil-layli wal-nahar wa ana akhfiru al-dhunub jami'an fastaghfiruni aghfir lakum that, O oh my servants, indeed you fall into mistakes. And what is intended by mistakes here is sins during the day and the night. During the day and the night. And I forgive all sins. So seek forgiveness from me and I will forgive you. Yani seek forgiveness from Allah and Allah will forgive you. And this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He states concerning humanity. And mankind was created weak. Mankind, humanity was created weak. Imam al baghawi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. He quotes the statement of Ibn Qaysan, or Qaysan, concerning the statement of Allah, وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا He states, 
That his desires, his hawa and his shahwa, his lust and his desires overtake or went over him, causing him to slip into committing sins, causing him to do that which is displeasing to Allah. Causing him to do that which is considered transgressing, transgressing the set boundaries of Allah. Thus, no one yani, is free from falling into sins. And everyone, each and every human being that walks the face of this earth, stands in dire need of al-istighfar or seeking forgiveness from Allah. As al-istighfar, yani talabul maghfira. It is seeking or requesting forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Shaykh Uthaymeen rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi states, al-khata alladhi yasduru min bani adam إما تقصير في واجب أو فعل محرم ولا يخلع الإنسان من ذلك ولكن دواء الذنوب الاستغفار He says the mistakes that emanate from the descendants of Adam they are either from falling by, by means or uh, from falling short or being negligent and carrying out some obligatory action or by doing something that is prohibited and no one from amongst humanity is free from that no one from amongst humanity is free from falling short and doing something that is pleasing to Allah or free from falling into something that is displeasing to Allah. However, the cure for sins is istighfar, is seeking forgiveness from Allah, is turning to Allah repentance, is coming to Allah with a pure and sincere heart, and begging Allah for His forgiveness. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in His noble book, or He commands us to do so in His noble book, وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا فَسَبِّحْ يعني السبح تنزيه الله عن النقص والعيب عن كل نقص وعيب Declaring Allah to subhanahu wa ta'ala to be far above every fault or blemish or defect This is one of someone Yani has or does tasbih for Allah. He glorifies Allah. Thus Allah is commanding the individual to do this. So glorify the, pl- the praise of your Lord and seek His forgiveness. And seek His forgiveness. Indeed, He is the one that accepts repentance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكْ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مُتَقَلَّبَكُمْ وَمَثْوَاكُمْ So know that there is no object of worship and truth except Allah and seek forgiveness for your sins and for the believers, men and women. And indeed Allah, and I said, in Allah, rather the verse is, Wallah, Wallahu Ya'alam. And Allah knows uh, the, the, uh, yani, the places in which you move about to, and your lodgings or your places of rest. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Kul e'unabbi'ukum bi khayrun min dhalikum. لَلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِ مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَأَزْوَاجٌ مُطَحَّرَةٌ وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ 
Shall I not inform you of that which is better than that? Yani, in the previous verse in Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was uh, talking about yani, the affairs of this dunya and things that entice individuals in this dunya. So then he commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Qul, bi min Say, should I not inform you of that which is better than that? For those that have that taqwa, or fear their Lord, are gardens underneath which rivers flow. And they will abide therein forever. And they will have purified wives. And pleasure from their Lord, pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith of Abi Sa'id al Khudri, the Prophet, uh, the Prophet sallam, he stated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the people of Jannah, Are you all pleased? They responded, وَمَا لَنَا يَا رَبَّنَا أَن لَا تَرْضَى أَن لَا نَرْضَى وَأَنْتَ أَعْتَيْتَنَا مَا لَمْ تُعْتِي أَحَدًا مِنْ خُلْقِكَ Why should we not be pleased? When you have given us that which you have not given to, the, from, to anyone else from amongst your creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to them, فَإِنِّي and I will give you that which is better than that. They responded, Ya Rabbana, Ayu Shayin Afdalu Min Dalik. What is more better than this? The paradise that we're in, the felicities and the bounties that are contained therein. What is better than this? The Messenger وسلم, he responded that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, Uhillu alaykum ridwani wa la askhutu alaykum ba'd. That I will make permissible for you all my, my pleasure, and I will never be displeased with you all after that. So in this particular verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that which is with those that implement that which he loves and is pleased with in this life. That they will have purified wives. That they will be in a paradise underneath which rivers flow. Paradise underneath, underneath which, with gardens underneath which rivers flow. And that they will have the greatest reward, the pleasure of Allah. Then he stated, those that will receive that. الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ They are those that say, O oh our Lord, indeed we believe. Indeed we believe. So forgive us of our sins and protect us from the torment. There are those that are seeking forgiveness, asking Allah's forgiveness. As-sabirina, as-sadiqina, al-qanitina, al-munfikina, wal-mustaghfirina, bil-ashar. Those that are patient, truthful, yani obedient to Allah. Those that spin in the way of Allah and seek forgiveness from Allah in the latter parts of the night. They seek forgiveness from Allah in the latter parts of the night. Thus, in this month of Ramadan, a month in which the doors of the paradise, the doors of mercy, the doors of the heavens are wide open, that we should be busied in doing that which will benefit us. فَحْرِسْ عَلَى مَا يَنْفَعُكَ وَاسْتَعِينْ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْجَزْ As the Prophet ﷺ, he stated, Be diligent in that which will benefit you. Seek aid in Allah, and do, and do not be weak in that regard. Thus I advise myself and my, and my brothers to be diligent in that which will benefit you in this month. 
And one of the most beneficial of actions in this month is being diligent and, and seeking Allah's forgiveness. Turning to Allah in repentance. Asking Allah to wipe away or remove or expiate one's sins. Fearing the day in which every single individual from the time of Adam until the time in which the, the, the Yom Kiyama will be established will be placed on one plane and, they will under, and we will undertake or undergo trials and calamities and distresses that none of us will be able to bear. Fearing that day and hoping, having hope and that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has waiting from felicities and bounties and rewards for those that are devoutly obedient to Him in this life. I leave the brothers with the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He says, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ ذَوَاتَ أَفْنَانِ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ فِيهِمَا عَيْنَانِ تَجْرِيَانِ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ فِيهِمَا مِنْ كُلِّ فَاكِهَةٍ فاكهة زَوْجَانِ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ مُتَّكِئِينَ عَلَى فُرُشٍ بَطَائِنُهَا مِنْ إِسْتَبْرَاقٍ وَجَنَى الْجَنَّتَيْنِ دَانٍ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ فِيهِنَّ قَاصِرَةُ الطَّرْفِ لَمْ يَطْمِثْهُنَّ إِنْسٌ قَبْلَهُمْ وَلَا جَانٍ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ كَأَنَّهُنَّ الْيَقُوتُ وَالْمَرْجَانِ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ and I'd rather, and, and I, I tr- I rather trust in the translation of the Noble Qur'an in order to translate these verses. But as I translate these verses, I want the brothers and sisters to keep in mind that that which is waiting in a paradise, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the paradise, that its true reality bears no resemblance to that which is found in this dunya. The only similarity is in the names and the general meanings. So keep this in mind as these verses are reflected upon. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, But for him who fears the standing before his Lord, there will be two gardens. Then which of the blessings of your Lord will you both deny? Yani jinn and men. With spreading branches then which of the blessings of your Lord will you both deny? In both there will, there will be two springs flowing freely. Then which of the blessings of your Lord will you both deny? In them will be every kind of fruit in pairs. Then which of the blessings of your Lord will you both deny? Reclining upon couches, couches lined with silk, silk Brocade, and the fruits of the two gardens will be near at hand. So which of the favors of your Lord will you all deny? Therein there will be qasiratu tarf, yani chas, or chaste women, or wives, with whom no man or jinn has touched, yani has had intercourse with, so, so which of the blessings of your Lord will you both deny? They are like rubies and pearls, yani their beauty. So which of the favors of your Lord will you all deny? And is there any reward for good other than good? So which of the favors of your Lord will you all deny? And with that, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, أستغفرك وأتوب إليك